And we're live. Content provided at the event is for general information only, not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Any performance reference is historical, no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Any economic forecasts set forth during the event may not develop as predicted. There can be no guarantee that any strategy will be successful. These thoughts and opinions are those of Gimbal Financial and do not represent the views of LPL Financial. Securities offered through LPL Financial, a member of FINRA and SIPC Investment Advice, offered through Gimbal Financial, registered investment advisor, and separate entity from LPL Financial. Good morning. Hey, check this out. As you were doing those disclaimers, I was reading, Caroline buys these uh, kombucha drinks. And I don't really know what these things do for you, but she says they're healthy. So I drink them every now and then. <laughs> and um, <laughs> one, of the, one of the um please notes on here, disclaimers, uh, do not drink blah, blah, blah um, uh, due to your religious beliefs. You ever seen that? There is a small portion of alcohol in there. I bet that's why. Yeah, that's wow. exactly it. You drinking so, on the job. <laughs> I'm, drink, I'm drinking on the job. I think we may need to call in our HR experts with what's going on around here today. <laughs> oh, that's great. If you notice that first disclaimer said something about do not use while water is nearby or something. So Doug, I hope your sprinklers are turned off. Yep, that's right. For the remainder of at least yeah. this this episode. <laughs> hey, we're all good here. Greetings from my backyard. We are going to take full advantage of the day today. My plan is to uh, work outside right here and, and watch one of my sons collect the leaves. He's working remotely from home. Uh, I think he might be having lunch with Heath's son today. But other than that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to watch him do some leaves. Caleb uh, launched into the world of capitalism yesterday. He was began being gainfully employed, and uh, he uh, was able to do it in a manner that is something he enjoys. So how's that for the best of both worlds? That's pretty good. Could be better. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, it's nice. It's good. Amanda, what, uh, what, what's going on at www.gimbalfinancial.com? Let me show you. We've got a new look. Thanks to our friend Abe. Can you guys see this? Drum roll, please. We have a new website. And wow. it looks, we are in the 21st century. It looks cool. My developer boyfriend told me that we were way more tech savvy now. We looked not like we were back in the 1990s. So <laughs> we're winning there. That's good. That's a good looking group of people that was on that picture you had there. Oh yeah. Thanks to Caitlin Tyner Photography. Check her out. She's great. She took all of our new headshots. If it would load quickly enough. But um, one of the biggest things, we tr really tried to simplify our website, clean it up, make it as basic as we possibly could. So everything that you could need here is on here. And one of the biggest features that we encourage you guys to use this for is the login to your account view. <laughs> is my Wi-Fi a little fidgety? <laughs> it's good. All right. And if you guys have logged into account view recently, it looks a little different. So just a heads up on that. There's a couple new changes here. Um, you got to type in your username and then hit next. And that's where you'll put your password in. So, um, if this is uncomfortable to you, if this is too much change for you, give us a call. We'd be happy to walk you through it because um, it is, it's, it's not like it's always been, you know, account view looks like it's also in the 21st century as well. It, it was looking a little outdated there for a while. So um, everyone's hopping on board. <laughs> yeah, they've done it. How am I looking these days? Am I looking like I'm in the 21st century, Amanda? Always, always, <laughs> Keith. <laughs> Yeah, this is looking good. And, and yeah, like Amanda said, if you're having a struggle to get on, give us a shout. Let us know. It might not be you. Uh, they've changed the account view address. And we didn't know that. We had to talk with our tech support crew to get the help. So we can help you out. Just give us a ring. Let us know how it's going. Give us some feedback. Have either of you guys clicked on that trouble logging on thing? Does that Will that do a lot of the work for them or uh, do you know? I can tell you this, I, I signed on um, to this page with my account uh, maybe a week or two ago. Normally I just go through uh, my own 
stuff, I, the way I view uh, all of our clients' accounts is how I see my accounts, but I decided I want to see it from the client view. And so I logged on here a couple weeks ago and I couldn't remember my username. I couldn't remember my password. And so I had to go through every step and scenario. And what ended up happening for me is I did hit the trouble logging on button. It, uh, LPL did send me an email to my personal email address asking me to reset my password. I was able to do all of that and it, and it did work, but it took some time. And, um, and uh, I, I would definitely give it about 24 hours because sometimes things have to recycle uh, overnight. But it didn't take you 24 hours. It took you, what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? How long did it take you, Doug? Yeah, I, I would say 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And I, I, was, doing, I was doing it through my phone. And so, uh, you know, that, that can be a little more challenging at times, too, just because screen size and then you're having to toggle back between... Uh, the LPL screen and your email. So just keep that in mind. Um, I, I would say that's probably a little more challenging for the older people, Doug. The younger people like Amanda, they know how to navigate their phones. Yeah, it, it is. And and so just just lean on us if, if you need some help. And, and uh, Amanda, she can help you navigate through these seas of change. Absolutely. Here to help. That's the website and uh, our YouTube is connected through there too. So if you click that blog page um, has our most recent video that's on our YouTube channel. But again, you can always find all of our um, weekly updates, curious investors um, on the roads. Those are all on our YouTube channel. So. And where did you get that gorgeous background, Keith? Where it was, uh, it looked like you were like a, a New York uh, stockbroker with all the gimbal in the background and gimbal financial logo and all that stuff. That looked pretty good. Well, Doug, I am, I'm not living in the past. I am uh, <laughs> bring it back. I'm kind of a hip dude. So I mean, I he looked like he just talking. signed a big contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying to stay relevant here. Figuring You're definitely in the 21st century more than any of us right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, not only am I impressed with the logo, but I'm impressed how quickly you just pulled that up. Uh, folks, that was not a pre-planned thing. Matter of fact, nothing we do really is pre-planned. Uh, this, is, this is all coming at you fresh. This is like Friday morning live, Saturday night live, Friday morning live. <laughs> yeah, if we weren't COVID friendly, this would be like a morning in Gimbal Financial. Absolutely. But here hey, we are, COVID Can times. we talk uh, a little bit about the stock market? Yeah, I would say uh, we can do that. I, I would, I, I, I think before I would jump into that, I, I think we mentioned last week that you and I spent our weekend in some intense training and I explained it to my son. Um, and um, it's, you can see how irrelevant I am by this example I gave him. I, I told him the people that we're going to spend the weekend with would be like if, if you as a basketball golf ball player could go spend your weekend with Michael Jordan, which seems relevant to me. But I think to my son's generation, it would be like LeBron James or Stephen, Stephen, Stephen Kerr or whatever, I, I Curry, whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think those last two names are spot on because they're still playing. And, the, and yeah. these folks that we got to sit with last weekend and we're going to sit with again uh, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, uh, they're still in the game. They're, they're, yeah. they're still top of their game like uh, Stephen Curry and uh, LeBron and Victor Oladipo. Yeah, well, it's cool. And, and so uh, um, it's hard for a lot of people to imagine that we could sit on uh, a Zoom meeting for what, five hours, three days in a row uh, and get jazzed about it. But that's, uh, that's what we've been doing. Yeah, it's been a great experience. It's, and uh, it's, it's something like, you, just like your knowledge of your investments, one thing builds upon the other. And so uh, as we go forward in these future years, that's our hope for you is that you understand what it is that you own and why you own it, why you own it at this time, why you wouldn't own it at another time. We want you to have a good grip on that. Here is the NASDAQ. Do y'all see that? Coming. Yep. There it goes. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, we, um, man, what a, 
this could give you ulcers, all this stuff that was going on. I don't know if it gives you ulcers or what. Definitely would uh, upset your stomach. And that was, this was uh, late February through April, this big V here, which these type of drops in, in recoveries don't very, like very seldom ever happen like that. And, and so that, that's hard on the psychology of us as investors, hard on our emotions. Uh, and then we started seeing similar kind of activity here at the end of August. Um, and then another sell off kind of like the August one, not quite as rough as those two days there at the end of August, but still a similar percentage drop. And uh, what I see going on, I think I mentioned last week that I don't like long lines and, and, uh, this is a weekly chart of the same thing. And, and it's showing you each line shows you how much range that index had during the week. And like this week right here, um, the low that week was 10,875 and the high was 12,074. That's, that's a 10% swing in a week. So if you had a million dollar account, it was a hundred thousand dollar swing. And, that's a lot of volatility in a week, not, not as much as what we saw over in the early part of the year. But the thing I saw this week, Doug, I don't know if you guys noticed this, was this week was a really short line. Like it's been, yeah. the market has been quieting down. And I think that is a positive thing, even though we are in really interesting times uh, in, in the country right now. Yeah, I, I think that's been a good observation that the markets are pretty much flat for this week. Uh, we've had some movement. Uh, e even if you go back and, and just connect those tops together, uh, it's, it's good to see that the market is showing some type of strength right around there. And uh, if we could keep, keep things, if we could build right around that level, that would add a lot of comfort to uh, investors and in making decisions. And, and, and so there's times where we want to be in markets like this, and then there's times where we want to be out. And that's, that is the, the trick of the trade is to utilize cash as much as possible for safety and to utilize cash for opportunities when things start to look a little better. Yeah, I was um, reflecting on an old um, time investor. Some of our listeners might have been old enough to remember the old commercial for the investment company EF Hutton and it, it was uh, I sent Doug an old video of it this week and it said when EF Hutton speaks people listen and uh, um, one of his business partners was a guy named Gerald Loeb back this would have been in the 30s 40s and 50s and Gerald Loeb uh, just had great success investing in the market and and one of his principles was that we have to treat our capital like a rabbit that darts from um, opening to, to safety, from opening to safety. And, and um, this, this market uh, may give us a chance to leave capital more exposed on a longer term basis, but we definitely, by just looking at that weekly chart over there, you can see there's just a lot of volatility right now. And it's, it's a more difficult market in the short term to make money. And we'd like to, kind of see it stabilized so we can kind of have more comfort with the long term. The I think the interesting thing about this week, even though it looks like you know not a lot has happened, it's been pretty flat, there has been so much activity with individual stocks. Uh, this has been a time when stocks have been reporting their earnings, how well they've been doing. Um, I was talking with my son Warner. He he is a seventh grader. And we were talking about his grades. They go you know, quarter to quarter. And uh, he said, Dad, does business operate the same way? Uh, do you get a report card quarter to quarter? <laughs> and I thought that was a pretty astute observation. And so we are in the report card season uh, for many stocks. And I just wanted to highlight a few of these. Um, and again, these are not recommendations to go out and buy or sell or do anything with these companies, but I just add some, some context for you to think about. And uh, I picked a few. So uh, Tesla was moving up pretty big uh, this week. It's, it's had some, some good spark. And Tesla has been spurred on just by optimism that they're gonna be able to continue innovating in new spaces 
and selling more cars. If you think about Tesla, they are just an amazing disruptor um, where they created the electric car. And so uh, that's one that we take a lot of calls on. And normally uh, our rule is if we start, um, you know, if I'm getting my hair cut and uh, my hair stylist, uh, no offense here, Jamie, but my, my hairstylist starts talking to me about uh, buying some Tesla, you know, uh, that, that's probably, I, I need to start uh, taking a look at maybe some other ideas uh, just because it's so prevalent and so well known. Um, Target, Target moved up and advanced. They had some great earnings. And the thing that I found interesting about Target this week is this, their average ticket, their average ticket, their average sale jumped up 15%. And so families out there, uh, are you spending more? Maybe you're eating at home more. Maybe you're going through uh, household materials quicker because you're all home. Uh, whatever it is, um, money is being spent at Target and it jumped up 15% on the average ticket. That, that's pretty significant. And, and their, their competitor, Walmart, has been seeing a surge in the Walmart e-commerce site. I know my dad loves to use Walmart's e-commerce site. I've never used it, but, but I know a lot of people love it and use it. <clears throat> and the last real interesting piece I saw, and this is a stock I hear about a lot. It's a stock that Keith and I were talking about earlier this week is Apple. And uh, yeah, I'm a fan of Apple products. I, I really like Apple products, not an endorsement here, but I just, I do. I, I've got a 2011 MacBook that I called them on this week, and they were willing to take the call and help me navigate through a challenge we were having. So, so, so I really like Apple, but, but Apple, they did something interesting. They cut commissions for small app designers, and they cut them, get this, they cut them to 15%. <laughs> I can't imagine if we charge people 15%, we wouldn't have any clients, but, but they charge 50, they reduced wow. it to 15% and it was 30%. And so uh, in, in this, this drop in their, in their app charge fee was due to pressures uh, that were put on them from the government and from consumers. And so uh, those are the battles that a business their size has to face is, you know, men, there are many fronts. But I thought that was very interesting about the, the app designers commissions. So that's what's going on with just a few stocks. And, um, and Keith and I are paying close attention to what is going on in stock market leaders, because those are the ones that eventually uh, push markets higher. I did a little reconnaissance this week for y'all. Um, I, I am curious about certain things that have to do with finances. And I, I spent a good hour and a half in a coin shop this week because I realized that a number of people have um, accumulated, whether you know it's gold, silver, or coins. And, um, and, and those sorts of things uh, could be stamp collections, could be whatever collection. Those things serve a point, a purpose, but at some point uh, they need to be either given away, converted to a cash form or organized in a way that is useful to maybe whoever you, you intend to live, leave those assets to. And, and um, my suggestion to any of you that collect items that you think will hedge protect you against market fluctuations, give you alternative ways to store value for whatever situation concerns you, uh, is to try to consolidate what you have and get fewer numbers of it, but higher quality. And, and that, that's really not any different than what we do with portfolio management. We try to get rid of the weaker, the lesser value things and try to get more valuable things in there. And um, for example, if you had a silver dollar collection, you can go on Google and say, what are high value silver dollars? And most of the silver dollars that you're going to find out there aren't high value. And, and so you could sell those at whatever the market price is and then go use the proceeds of that to say maybe you had 20 silver dollars and you can buy a single high value one. And, and so you declutter things in that kind of a strategy and 
probably increase the longer term value of that resource that you have there. But that would, that's one of the things I was trying to figure out. I, I know that a lot of people do that sort of thing. And so I, I don't know if they've ever thought through a strategy for something like that. Well, I, I like the way you're thinking there. And, and sometimes when you own something like that, it may not be as liquid. And so uh, giving yourself patience to find the right marketplace for you uh, would be very important. Um, on the flip side of that, uh, I spent some time uh, renegotiating the Shreve cell phone plan. <laughs> Do you guys realize how much data that you use? It's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. I was reading, Keith, you remember a couple years back, uh, our friend Bradford? Yes. <clears throat> Keith and I went out to New York City. I don't know. How long ago was that? It's been a while now. Probably four or five years, I bet. We had a wonderful trip. We met this guy named Bradford, and we met him at uh, Alger Investments. And he is just a, a brilliant mind and a curious guy, too. He, he loves to dive into the why behind uh, the disruptions of the marketplace. And, and it's a great piece that I get. He, he calls and he'll he'll talk about different trends that are happening and for the last couple of weeks i've kept this one on my desk and it's called the internet of things has arrived and in 2019 there were 14 zettabytes out there in 2025 there's estimated to be 79 and a zettabyte has 21 zeros a gigabyte has nine and so, um, yeah, so the Shreves, we use about 50, 50 gigabytes a month, or at least that's what we're allowed to use by our Verizon plan. We, we were allowed to use 22, uh, but they ramped it up for us. How nice. And, and we've got all kinds of things that are connected to these phones. Like even when I ride my bike, I want to show you guys this. These are the Internet of Things. This is a light that I put on the back of my bike. And it blinks, yes, but it also talks to this thing. And so it tells me if there's anywhere from one to eight cars behind me. All of this is connected to my cell phone to give me data on how my ride went. And so the Internet of Things has arrived and, and we're constantly using more and more Internet. And so Bradford's latest piece which I had never heard of this term. Last, last time we were with Bradford, he introduced me to, to a term CRISPR, which is pretty prevalent today. But he gave me a new term uh, this week and it's edge computing. Maybe you guys have heard of that, but it's basically where uh, so much data is being used that we're trying to work the edges of the internet to get faster and faster speed. And what that means is working those places that are a little bit closer to your home so that you have a faster connection to the internet. So these types of things are just creating business opportunities, uh, growth opportunities in new ways and new opportunities for investors. It is uh, um, the, the, the possibilities of the future um, are less concentrated on governments and more concentrated on uh, people who are creative that come up with things like edge computing or CRISPR or things like that. And, and, and I think those are the things that are exciting and possibility. It, we've talked about in the past few weeks why, why we don't want to get our thoughts focused on all the political and things going on. And, and so, yeah, I think those, those possibilities are huge as we look to the future. And uh, I, I forwarded it to you guys. I, I don't personally think there's a lot of true leadership in, in, in our country that's in the forefront. I think leadership is being willing to uh, not take a poll to decide how you make a decision, but you do what you believe is right. And, and one of the true leaders in our industry is a guy named Jim Bowen. And uh, Jim made a couple of comments this week that I thought were thoughtful and thought provoking at the same time. Um, and, and this is self-serving, so that's okay. It's our show, right? So <laughs> he, he uh, you know, 
he, he pointed out that the financial advisor is one of the most critical cogs in the financial world in the United States. It's not, it's not his company. It's not the mutual fund companies. It's not the, it's not Wall Street. It's the, the person you talk to on the phone that helps you think through situations pertinent to your specific circumstances through your life. And he said, I, I've watched you guard the wealth of the most productive people on earth for decades is what he said on this thing. And I just thought that was really interesting because uh, in, in our roles as a team to help you all, it is a very emotional kind of thing. We, we, we go through all kinds of times with each and every one of you. And, and so that process of us to, to serve you and honor you, to understand what's going on when we talk about the market, to know what's going on with technologies they're developing, whether it's CRISPR or edge computing, um, those things are all time consuming, but the idea to even know your specific situation and understand that is really where I think we find joy and excitement, but very few people recognize uh, that component. And I was really encouraged to hear uh, Jim Bone. I don't even know if I ever, you know, when I was an employee, I don't know if I ever heard a manager tell me that what you do is of that value, but we, we see the value in what we do there. And so, um, and, and he, he said one of the things that excited him about what advisors do is that we have passion and hopefully you all see how much passion we have, not only in how we serve you, but how we are working behind the scenes. So Saturday and Sunday and Monday watching a video for five hours is a, it's a passionate thing. You don't, you don't just do that because it's required of you. It, it comes from the inside out. And, uh, and then the other thing he said, which was partially correct, he said, He's talking to financial advisors and he said, you critically think uh, and you keep the emotions out of the way. And that part, I don't think he, <laughs> I don't think he probably understood as well. Uh, we, we believe that in order for us to stay relevant as we have to critically think, we have to look at politics, we have to look at innovation, we have to look at your situations and the ups and downs that you're going through, whether it's economic, whether it's vocationally, whether it's family things. And, and I don't think anybody can honestly say that they can integrate all those things and keep the emotions completely out of it because we really value your relationship, your friendship, uh, your business. And, and if you do that, as long as we've been doing that with you all as friends and clients, it's hard not to be emotional. Yeah, thanks, Keith. And that's, I think, a great segue into, into Thanksgiving. You know, we just want to express how thankful we are for each and every one of you and uh, for opening the doors uh, to relationship. And uh, it's just a, it's a joy to walk through life with you guys in different seasons. Sometimes we're talking very regularly. Other times it's a little more infrequent. But we do want to thank you for reaching out and including us and uh, bouncing ideas off us and allowing us to hear you out. Uh, Amanda, I don't think, are we on for next week or are we going to take the week off? We're going to take Friday off, enjoy post Thanksgiving belly aches or whatever we've got going next Friday after our Thanksgiving feast. But um, just to echo what um, Doug just said, we are so thankful to serve you and be a part of your um, everyday lives, whether we're talking to you on a regular basis or if we're like you said, a little more infrequently, we are just so thankful and blessed to be able to be a part of your, your lives. Well, that's all I've got for this week. Anybody have anything else? Have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family, whether you're with them or whether you have to do a Zoom call or a conference call. Just uh, be sure to reach out to those people that uh, might not have somebody to reach out to them this holiday season. It's going to be a unique one for everybody. Here is thankful for you all. Bye. Bye.